In Tornado Alley, you can never let your guard down. While you're watching a tornado in front, another will sneak up behind you. They're beautiful. They're graceful. They're majestic. They're exciting. They're powerful. And they're awesome. But up close, tornadoes are the most violent creatures on planet Earth. Their killing grounds are the sweeping plains of North America. Welcome to Tornado Alley. These are the stories of human survival. My first thought was, oh my god, we're, we're all going to die. That's when all the glass blew in. These are the stories of the men who chase storms. Oh my gosh. I take my life in my hands every day when I storm chase. Uh, you could hear the roar. And that's where we measured winds over 300 miles an hour. These are the tales of Tornado Alley. Across the length and breadth of the United States, more than a thousand tornadoes touch down every year. But it's Nebraska, Texas, Kansas, and Oklahoma that suffer most. The original Tornado Alley. In spring, cold, dry air funneled down from Canada collides with hot, wet air flowing north from the Gulf of Mexico. This supercharged maelstrom generates towering thunderclouds, and they attract the weather enthusiasts who spend vacations in hot pursuit of the perfect storm. There is probably a golf ball to baseball size hill in that upper. One such storm chaser is Roger Hill. You feel like a hunter chasing some, some enormous prey that, if, you, if you're not careful, can turn around and come after you. <laughs> That's exactly what happened on the 11th of May, 2000. Look Large at tornado, it. Bill! Large tornado! You gotta hurry! But since we were right in this path, we had to hurry up and get to the south of it, uh, you know, before the tornado crossed our location. Get south of this damn thing! I don't want to die. Uh, you could hear the roar of the tornado. Going north, this, we're safe here, we're, we're fine. We're safe here, it is safe. Roger may believe that he's safe filming this Iowa tornado, but some twisters keep a trick up their sleeve. Look out, look out, hang on! The winds just absolutely blasted me where I was standing at with, with winds over 100 mile an hour. One whole side of my body from where I was standing facing the tornado and the winds that hit me, one whole side of my body was covered with mud and dirt, but the other side of the body of my body was, was just totally dry and <laughs> clean. That's a monster. That is a monster. Look at the RFD blowing around here. You get anywhere from 70 to 100 mile an hour winds blow around this thing. Roger's tornado chasing record is 21 in just one year. So far in this season, he's notched up a mere five twisters. Adam, look out your window there. Look out your window. But Roger is about to get lucky. This first tornado tracks for 10 miles, but its parent storm is far from finished. Tornado number two on the ground. Condensation funnel has not formed yet, but look at the rotation and look at the wall cloud up above. Tornado, tornado number, number two. two. Right here, folks, right here, right in front of us. Look at that. On the ground, weak right now, but it will strengthen. Look at that tornado go. Right. Good Lord. Incredible. Incredible. Oh, my goodness, look at this thing. Wow. That is absolutely incredible. Listen to it. So this is the tornado number three. Tornado number three. Another tornado on the ground, number four. 
Number four. Oh, that's a monster. Look how big that thing is. This one supercell was to put down a total of six tornadoes. Roger's best day ever. Wow. Oh, look at the funnel coming out in front of it here. Another one coming down, stabbing down in front. See it? We have a yeah, large large funnel yeah. on the right side. Vortex there. tornado to our northwest. Large look at the funnel coming down. Tornado. See it? Oh. And the next tornado. Absolutely incredible supercell. Oh, no, believe me, that'll kill you. Yeah, that's dangerous. <laughs> that would kill you. Tornado chasing can be risky, as Oklahoma chasers Rick Jarvis and Chad Bradley are about to find out. Get away from this bridge, my gosh! Look, three tornadoes on the ground. One, two, three. Rick, that's moving right at us. We gotta get out of here. Go, go, go. Ricky, oh my gosh. Ready? Rick, Ready? I'm getting nervous. This is bad. Look at that. Look at that. Rick, you just Ready? go. Ready? Yes. Be careful. Be careful. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Be careful, Ricky. Rick, this is not good. Minimizing the risk takes years of experience. No one is more familiar with the hazards of Tornado Alley than daredevil storm chaser Jeff Petrovsky. It's extremely dangerous. Um, it can be very deadly if you don't know what you're doing. And I take my life in my hands every day when I storm chase. But even experienced chasers like Jeff can run slap bang into trouble. In June of 1999, we're chasing near Alma, Kansas on the Nebraska border. Don't move. Don't move. 70, 80-mile-an-hour crosswinds. It literally just shoved the van off the road. Right Next thing I know, we're going sideways down into the ditch. And meanwhile, the tornado's only about a half a mile in front of us. So the van's at a 45-degree angle with this big monster tornado right in front of us. It's unbelievable. Tornado chasing can be exciting and dangerous, but there are also long hours, empty roads, and you may see nothing at all. So the first time Jeff went chasing with his new fiance, Catherine, they could never have guessed what the trip had in store. First day that me and Catherine had ever been out storm chasing, it starts tornadoing. There's a cow. There goes the telephone poles. We see it move, it's, it's moving right toward us, it. moving southeast. There's a cow in the middle of the road. So I stop the vehicle, I get out and film the cows, the tornado crosses the road. Well, Catherine's never chased before this day with me, and she's thinking, she's scared, uh, naturally, so she locks the car. It might be, it might be. Got the whole sky rotating above me. We gotta get east, it's moving, it's moving south, it's moving south. Astonishingly, on Catherine's first chase, they found tornado after tornado after tornado. One day, <laughs> April 24th, 12 tornadoes in one day. <laughs> this all happened in one day. And at the end of the day, she looked at me and she goes, Jeff, is it always like this? <laughs> But it's not just the chasers at risk in Tornado Alley, as Jeff was the witness near Brady, Nebraska. Even in this remote and rural area, a tornado can exact a hefty toll. It doesn't matter where you live, I don't think anybody's safe anywhere in the plains, anywhere in Tornado Alley. As the tornado got closer and closer, Jeff realized with horror that a solitary farmhouse stood in its path. This farm was home to the Taylor family, their three dogs and three much-loved pet geese. The tornado was picking up speed, now rotating at up to 200 miles an hour. 
when I saw it at the road, that's when I knew we were in trouble. Trouble was an understatement. The tornado was thundering directly towards Sue Taylor and her 22-year-old daughter, Heather. I saw the tornado coming through the front door, and my, the first thought that popped into my head was, oh my god, we're, we're all going to die. I was terrified. Jeff Petrovsky was still taking pictures. There was nothing he could do as the tornado struck with terrifying power. I heard all of the boards shatter. It was just so loud, my ears popped, and my head started hurting. And there was just so much pressure and so much power in that. It lasted just seconds, leaving them entombed in the wreckage. I have lots of stitches, and my, my legs just feel like raw hamburger. I mean, they just hurt really bad. I still cannot believe that you know, we actually crawled out of there without more injuries than we did. It was, it was very frightening. <laughs> it was 12 hours since the storm hit. They were still missing their favorite goose, Snowball, but the other pets were safe and sound. Everybody's accounted for. Yep, everybody is. And the tornado had seriously rearranged their cars. I had the cars parked here. Um, there, I didn't have them parked quite like this, but <laughs> the one I was driving is under the tree here. And then there was a house trailer parked here. And this is part of it here and part of it in the other tree. And then the frames under the van. This right here is a second story. If we'd gone to the basement, I think we probably would have been in serious trouble because the house is now in the basement. Pretty amazing. <laughs> there were strange noises coming from underneath the wreckage. No, there's a bunch of feathers, though. They couldn't see where the noise was coming from, but there was something alive down there that wanted to get out. Where'd you hear it? <laughs> Finally, they found it. I've got a flashlight in my car if you need it. Well, I just want to make sure you're not going to shake it. Hey, buddy, did you see what I saw? <laughs> Let me tell you about my night. The twister that destroyed the Taylor farm roared on through Tornado Alley, with Jeff Petrovsky still hard on its heels. He filmed it as it roped out and died 15 minutes later, and made friends with another injured survivor of the storm. You okay, baby? Oh, man. You okay, babe? Poor guy. Oh, did you, did you just survive the big F3, didn't you? Wow. You okay, baby? Some tornadoes that Jeff Petrovsky has filmed are not survivable by man or beast. Oklahoma, heart of Tornado Alley, May 1999. Jeff himself was nearly killed chasing America's costliest tornado ever. It's at Northeast 123rd. Uh, here it comes. Following the storm through debris and near impassable roads, Jeff was finally forced to give up the chase. Do not try to ride this storm out in your home unless you are trapped. It was no less shocking for Tornado Alley's crack TV weather team led by meteorologist Gary England. I had never seen anything like it in my entire life. Being in this business, you always imagine what the F5 will be like, the worst tornado possible. And it was beyond anything in my imagination. As 65 tornadoes touched down around Oklahoma City, reports poured into the weather studio from chasers like Val Castor. In one regard, I'm looking at it saying, man, this is the most incredible tornado I've ever seen in my life. 
but you know, I'm feeling sorry for the people that's in its path and wishing I could do everything possible to warn them and get them out of the way. Those reports from Ground Zero led Gary to issue the ultimate warning. Val had been feeding me incredible information on storm structure and what it was doing and his opinion of it. We had great video coming in. It just clicked. And that's the first time I said, you need to be below ground level to survive. It just, I have never said that before in my life in 28 years in dealing with storms. And uh, you folks in the path of this storm have time to get below ground. You need to be below ground with this storm. This is a deadly tornado. When the scale of the damage became apparent, even the seasoned experts were astonished. It took a long time to soak in afterwards. It makes you realize how small and insignificant we are as humans. We're pretty vulnerable. Um, the storm coming up, you know, probably had the energy of no telling how many atomic bombs. The Oklahoma City tornadoes claimed 44 lives and destroyed 8,000 homes. Losses totaled a billion dollars, but it could have been far worse. A tornado of that magnitude moving through a populated area that big uh, could have resulted in as many as 800 lives lost, and probably should have. Everybody worked together perfectly to keep the loss of life down. You know, I'm proud to be part of a team that could contribute to helping people out like that. It's still very powerful. Oh, yeah. Watch out, the world's top tornado scientists were also risking their lives recording data close to the Oklahoma yeah, storms. Away, if you feel like it's coming towards us and doing anything stupid, stop and do a U-turn. Two years further on, Josh Werman and his team from Oklahoma University are still analyzing the data they collected that day. Their mobile radar equipment can see much more than the human eye. A tornado is a violently rotating column of air. What you see when you look at a video of a tornado is something very different. You can't see the air, but sometimes the pressure is low enough and the air is moist enough that a cloud actually forms and you have a condensation funnel. It also depends on what kind of debris it's passing over. If it's passing over a dry, dusty field, you'll have a big dust cloud. And depending on the characteristics of that dirt or sand, you can get other colorations in the tornado. Sometimes, of course, they're even illuminated because they're taking down power lines or transformers, so you have little spots of light in them. The May the 3rd tornado was so black, loaded with lethal debris, even the scientists were fearful. It was heading towards our hometown. At the same time that I was doing these intercepts in the trucks, I'm also trying to raise my wife on the cell phone and tell her to get the babies to the basement. So I can, there goes the vortex. The closer they can get to the tornado, the more reliable their measurements. That day, they got really close. Yeah, boy, that thing's still rotating. There was debris coming down out of the sky. And it wasn't just branches, it was pieces of houses. There was insulation and wood and plywood, things like that. So it was very clear that just over the next hill, that tornado was ripping apart homes and probably people. Yeah, one housing development, pretty bad shape. That really shook us up, I think, because we could see hundreds of homes had been destroyed and thought the death pole was in the hundreds, perhaps thousands from that storm. That's F1, right? In addition, we have data showing just how high the winds were. We measured winds over 300 miles an hour. Ridge Creek, Oklahoma, felt the full force of the May the 3rd tornadoes. 11 people died here. Many of the injured can only now tell their stories. Like 14-year-old cheerleader Haley Mathis. At 6 o'clock that evening, she was watching the news. Gary England was saying that everyone needed to be underground or basically that they weren't going to make it. So I was like, okay, well, it's kind of scary. Gary, you're right. That's the biggest I've seen in all day. 
Haley couldn't get below ground, so she took cover in her bathtub. The front door like swung open, and then like the tornado hit right then. It completely threw me all the way around, so I was inside of the tornado. The next thing I knew, I was underneath all this rubble. As the killer tornado passed, Haley's neighbors began a frantic search for survivors. Among the would-be rescuers was Gary Lavelle. When we turned the corner and came along the dirt road, you could see from one side of Bridge Creek to the other, and it was just mud. The tornado had changed things so much I couldn't recognize it. it. Hits you in the pit of your stomach. You just didn't know what to think. The whole area had been sealed off by police by the time Gary arrived with his 15-year-old son, Evan. I saw trees and insulation and trailer frames. It scared me. It was, that was the scariest part. Evan knew his best friend Haley was out there somewhere, and nothing would stop him from finding her. They told me I couldn't go down there, and I didn't see how they could stop me, so I just went down there anyways. Stumbling around in the chaos, Evan heard Haley cry out. He'd stood on her hand. She was trapped under a tree and badly injured. I kind of think that um, whenever it, like, threw me over that I think I hit the bathroom sink and broke my neck that way, but I didn't feel it. Haley's rescuers rushed her to the school gymnasium, already overflowing with injured and with more arriving by the minute. You could see trucks coming in my rearview mirror for I don't know how far with people on boards in the back of them. And, and I, that will probably, uh, I'll never forget that. I mean, it was amazing. Just one truck after another coming up and just we're just unloading people and taking them into the gymnasium. Haley's broken neck left her partially paralyzed. But now she's beginning to recover. I know she's going to be able to walk again someday because she's just tough like that. She's, she's a fighter. She won't. I know she will. I have a little bit of leg movement coming back, and I can move my toes and my fingers on my right side. I consider myself to be very lucky considering that I'm alive. She's one of my best friends. I've known her forever, so it would have been a big loss. I would have cried. I don't cry all that often, but I would have cried a little big time. It would have been very sad. Gary and Haley grew up in the heart of Tornado Alley. But scientists know that the danger zone spreads far wider. Tornado Alley really just describes an area of the Midwest where violent tornadoes are very frequent, particularly in the springtime. However, tornadoes occur in almost every state. As the jet stream moves northwards through the year, tornadoes tend to follow. When you plot the frequency of touchdowns on a map, Tornado Alley expands beyond its traditional heartland. There's a double danger early in the year when tornadoes hit the southern states. With short days, they often strike in the dark, and there's a high density of trailer parks. Little protection from even the smallest tornado. This fatal combination brought terror to Camilla, Georgia on Valentine's Day 2000. On duty that evening was state trooper Kevin Colson. The force of the wind, I would think, would have to be the worst in the way it's rotating. It, just, it simply destroys everything that it touches if, it, if it's strong enough. This trailer park was devastated by 200 mile an hour winds. The 13 people who died here probably never knew what hit them. This is where we found most of the fatalities. You know, it was quite disturbing. You know that these folks were laying in their bed asleep one minute, and the next minute they're laying in the yard. 
I knew a lot of these people. I went to school and grew up with these people. It's a fairly close-knit community, and, you know, everybody knows everybody. Some people had incredible escapes, like Willie F. Nelson. I heard this noise. It sounded like a train. And got in my closet. Then next thing I know, I heard windows and everything start busting out. My house just started coming apart. Everything just started coming apart. And then I started spinning around and around, around and around in the air. It must have blown me about 150 yards out here and dropped me. Willie and his family survived. When a tornado destroys your home, you realize what really matters in life. I like to find my kids' photos that I have saved for them from when they was real small. Everything else is destroyed, but I was hoping I could have found those. Oh, it's one of my... It's one of my baby books. The mechanics of tornado formation remain a mystery. Scientists still don't know exactly how the funnels can form and grow to such a monstrous size. Tornadoes can be replicated, but only on the smallest of scales. We do wind, rain, fire, blow things up. That's kind of our, our forte. Jim Gill produces special effects. He knows he can never compete with nature. To make a natural tornado that's 2,000 feet tall, you're talking about energy levels that man really couldn't create. Yet this tornado was created by Jim and his team. We have studied the physics of a tornado, how much power is necessary to achieve certain wind speeds. For small tornadoes, they work in the studio. A circle of powerful fans spin the air around. Smoke makes it visible, while one huge fan sucks up the gas into a twister. For a TV commercial, they built a giant tornado machine. This 40-foot vortex was produced by super-powered fans with blades from a helicopter. And for his latest trick, Jim's been playing with fire. We've put fire into our tornado just to see if it would work. Since it does pick up objects, will it pick up a burning fuel and burn it? Because we thought it might look kind of cool. It looks very cool. But fact can be stranger than fiction, and fire tornadoes can be a terrifying reality, as they were in the small town of Winkler, Canada, where a 160-acre flax factory lies on the edge of town. 11.30 p.m., the 19th of April, 2000. A tiny fire on one of the bales. 45 minutes later, it had turned into this. A million tons of flax became a raging inferno. It was filmed by Wayne Rempel. When I got here, this uh, whole place was in fire. There was fire all the way around us. There was a very strong wind blowing because of the, because of the fire sucking in all this air. It had been a calm night but temperatures of a thousand degrees and superheated gas soaring hundreds of feet in the air created a firestorm. Just like wind tornadoes, the flames began to twist. Workers scrambled to help, not realizing the threat of the tornadoes until it was too late. Among them was Jake Sawatsky. I see my colleague floor the accelerator. We were going to drive out of it, but uh, the wind was so strong the vehicle wouldn't go anywhere. And then, well, then you knew we were in trouble. Deadly fire tornadoes were drifting out of control across the plane. And a 
big twister come down onto the truck. Just like in a split second, there was the big boom when the window went. And then everything was just like a big noise, a lot of wind and a lot of dirt flying around, straw and everything. Is that unbelievable? The fire tornado flung the three-ton truck 150 yards across the field. And it sucked Jake's colleague, Irvin Harder, out of the window. And then I looked around into the cab of the vehicle, and he was not there. Irvin was killed instantly. Tornado Alley is mostly open plain, but city centers are not immune. Nashville, Tennessee, 1998, brought panic and chaos to a local TV station. I'm all right, I'm all right, all right. And in Salt Lake City in 1999, one person died in the only fatal tornado ever to strike Utah. A year later, it was a city in the center of Tornado Alley that was to take the full force of these killers. Today's date is March 28, 2000. Brand new video camera and the third chase of the year. I'm out here north of Winthorst, Texas. At three in the afternoon, one of America's most experienced storm chasers, Tim Marshall, was making a video diary as he chased a developing supercell. Time is 610. Uh, mileage is 793 and a half in North Fort Worth. Large wall cloud with tail. Coming on the deck to the west, Fort Worth is in trouble. Tim has been chasing tornadoes for more than 20 years. He knew just when this twister would hit Fort Worth. The, uh, the final that is starting to descend. More debris is starting to come on up from the ground. So the tornado formed over here initially, and it took a while to get going and moved on down to the east here, across the bottom land here, and then on into Fort Worth. We have a tornado, I believe, on the ground, moving uh, very close to downtown Fort Worth here. Downtown Fort Worth right there, and then the tornado is just right in front of me here. Fort Worth. People in downtown take shelter immediately and get off the street. It's dark and we have rain wrapping around it. Very difficult to see exactly what's going on, so people need to just duck and stay low here for the next few minutes. By now, calls were flooding into the emergency services. On the 35th floor of the Bank One Tower, security cameras in the Riata restaurant captured the moment of a tornado strike. What was once Fort Worth's most fashionable eatery was swept clean by the wind. Restaurateur Michael Evans watched the horror unfold. 
panicked, went into the dining room and saw a horrific sight outside, a, a total black mass. That was the start of a, of a horrible night. So I started asking people, you know, that were sitting down eating to, you know, make their way towards the center of the restaurant or at least get away from the windows. You could see the transformers blowing and they would get closer and closer to us. The chandelier up here kind of swings sometimes when we have a bad storm. Uh, but, I mean, it was swinging back and forth, you know, two or three feet. And at that point, the windows were probably moving in and out, probably a good foot, just moving in and out. It was a, it was a really uh, ominous sound. More than 100 diners and staff were running to the stairwell when, at 6.23 p.m., the tornado struck. And the windows kind of just went all at once. It sounded like a 747 in your bathroom. That's when all the glass blew in. Just louder than, than you could ever imagine. As the windows blew in, we were all trying to shove ourselves into the stairwell. I mean, the wind was really loud. I don't know if the building was actually starting to sway, but I started to get, you know, a little dizzy. And that kind of freaked me out because I was scared the building was going to fall down. We're standing in the proximity of where the two luckiest gentlemen in the restaurant were standing when the, when the back walls blew out. Uh, the, uh, uh, a manager had come in, and it was filmed from that video, and the two guys literally getting to that hallway there as the wall and the 1,000-pound freezers just explode through the kitchen. Another waiter and I uh, ducked into the office, crouched underneath the desk, and maybe 10 seconds later, it, it, nothing. It was just silence. And then we came out, and it, it was just destroyed. My wife's car got caught in the hailstorm and was totaled. My house got hit by the tornado. <laughs> so 2,000 can only get better. It's downtown Fort Worth. Looks like the tornado went through and there. Tons of debris everywhere. Look at this. Wow. Holy cow. There's glass falling out of the large skyscrapers. This is a disaster. The wind is pulling large shards of glass off this building. It's extremely dangerous. An estimated 3,000 windows were shattered. Glass was still falling days later and buildings had to be checked for structural damage. The job of checking for structural damage fell to Tim Marshall, the storm chaser who filmed the Fort Worth tornado and who's also an experienced wind engineer. This is the first building that was hit by the tornado and you see it as it was on the very day it was hit. And as soon as the tornado hit this building here, you had thousands and thousands of pieces of debris just flying out of the tornado and hitting the buildings downwind. And this is sort of like a domino effect. The glass that's in these buildings is designed for wind pressure. You throw a little piece of debris into that wind field, and then everything is gone. The rocks will break glass. The Fort Worth vortex showed just how much wind speeds can vary within a tornado funnel. The right side of this tornado actually packs much more of a punch than the left side. That's because of the way the tornado is rotating. And that is why you've got 100% of the windows blown out of this building on both of that side. But yet, if you go across to the other side, only 35% of the windows are blown out. They're still counting the full cost of the Fort Worth tornado. $300 million worth of damage, 200 people injured, and five dead five families whose lives have been shattered. One of those families were the Thorntons. Patty Thornton, her husband Doug, and her young son Michael, who suffers from cerebral palsy. Michael and his truck driver father, Doug, were inseparable. That day, he just went on out while I was still watching the news. And I wished I had told him 
you know, goodbye that day. Doug was heading for an evening shift in downtown Fort Worth. Already at the depot was colleague Robert Gordon. We saw this horrendous storm coming down from, looked like it was coming from the northwest. It was just like someone had put a black piece of paper over the sky. Sheltering in a flimsy security hut, Robert and his two colleagues hadn't realized the danger. But a vital warning came from Doug Thornton. He saw the people in the guard shack and uh, stopped to warn them. Someone holler, get out. I went under the desk trying to protect myself, a little realizing that it was a true tornado and that the building shortly was no longer going to exist. The tornado tossed trucks and cars around like toys. It ripped the office to shreds. This pile of debris is all that remains. It was just in pieces. It was almost as if it had, had disintegrated from the inside out, exploded. Tragically, Doug Thornton never made it back to his vehicle. At home, wife Patty had already realized something was wrong. Somebody had told us that Montgomery Wards was really destroyed, messed up, and somebody had died. And in my heart, for some reason, I just, I knew it was him. Doug's warning had saved lives, but at the cost of his own. Picked up by the wind, he was crushed amid the wreckage of the yard. It was one of those courageous split-second decisions that people make that have a drastic effect on, on their life or someone else's life. Doug's bravery left Patty a widow and son Michael without a father. I'm proud of what he did, but Michael misses him a lot, and he keeps coming up to me asking me why. They adored each other. Uh, they did everything together. Anything Michael needed, Daddy was always there to, to do for him. Hello, everybody. This is Howard Douglas. We say hi to Grandma. He understands that his daddy's a hero, but I mean, he already already knew his dad was a hero. Yeah. We'll see. That's it. As the year progressed, tornado touchdowns moved ever northwards, leaving Tornado Alley and crossing the Canadian border into Alberta. It was July 2000, and four Dutch tourists were enjoying the holiday of a lifetime, driving across Canada in a recreational vehicle, an RV. They were en route to beautiful Pine Lake and the Green Acres campsite on its shore. Touchdowns here are far rarer than in the heartland of Tornado Alley. The danger of severe weather was the last thing on their minds. As the afternoon drew to a close, the group settled down in their RV. They had no idea of what was about to hit them. On their camcorder, the RV had been tossed through the air by a tornado. Hundreds were injured and 11 people were dead. RVs, trailers and cars had been hurled into the lake Divers were called in to recover the wreckage. Within a day, they were clearing up the debris. Among the rescuers was Mountie Dan Doyle. I was utterly amazed at the destruction. There were boats that were back basically up in this area that had been dragged on down into the area. Vehicles that we had here 
For example, pickup trucks ended up on top of cars, on top of trailers, things of that nature. These pads, as you see farther up towards the ridge here, leading on down into this ridge, were basically picked clean of any trailers. The strength and track of the tornado was investigated by meteorologist Dennis Dudley. The core of the storm tracked through about 250 meters across, right through this campsite, and took it over the lake. Among the eyewitnesses that Dennis interviewed were the Dutch tourists. The RV was already shaken. Then I saw on the right side, I saw that tree was lying on the right here, snapped like a match. And I saw the RVs coming to us, rolling over to us. So I screamed that they should go down. We were just yelling on the ground, on the ground, and I was sitting here, I pulled my girlfriend on the ground. I saw the blue boat coming in from the water. I thought it was coming in to the windshield. Just, it just went down and, and smashed the front of the car. That was incredible. You, you're just so scared. You're scared to death. You don't know what's going to happen. There are 11 people dead around here, so... And the injuries we have is nothing compared to the others. Just glad to be alive. The tourists' unique camcorder footage gave weather investigator Dennis Dudley a rare opportunity to see the exact timing and duration of a tornado strike. I can see that. Thank you very much. That, uh, that helps me a lot. The damage that is caused by a tornado in trailer parks, in mobile home parks, is devastating. Trailers and mobile homes are absolutely no defense against the winds, even in a weak tornado. So really, um, this is the worst possible place this core could have gone through is right here. It was the final twist in the tale of tornado season 2000. Tornadoes first brought death and destruction to a trailer park in Georgia and claimed their final victims 3,000 miles away on a lakeside in Canada. Twisters know no boundaries in America's Tornado Alley. Thank you.